reason why water softeners fail to soften water is because people have leaky toilets. It's amazing, right? Leaky toilets. So their toilet is leaking. They think, oh, I'm, I can hear my toilet leak. No, then my toilets don't leak. Baloney. Without doubt, I'll say the big word, baloney. More and more times, my, my servicemen have told me, this is back about in the 2000 era, oh, I checked everything. And I'm like, did you check toilets? No, the customer and I, we walked around, we didn't hear anything. You can't hear them. They plow through water. We've had cases where they're going through 2,000 gallons of water a day. So this computer allows us to see day-by-day -day history. We might see that something went wrong uh, three weeks ago, and they went through 5,000 gallons of water, and then they're calling us for a service call a month later because they notice their water's bad. Well, an outside faucet broke in the cold weather, plowed through tons of water. Now we were able to actually diagnose what went wrong, and when they, you, you inundate this filter material with 5,000 gallons of water for four days straight, you literally can ruin the filter material inside, right? It's not, it's not made of titanium. I mean, it's not made of stainless steel. It's, it's called sacrificial media, which means it sacrifices itself in order to filter the, or in order to do the ion exchange in this particular case of a water socket. So this control valve allowed us to really understand that. Also, uh, in addition to that, the same control valve allowed us to use this valve in special filters that we would do. We would design chlorination systems and iron filters, and it provided us to extend the and, uh, rinse times, backwash times. It gives us a huge flexibility in being able to uh, adjust the cleaning cycles of the valve for each specific customer. So again, when I talk about 50% of our customers are on their own private well, if their well had a lot of garbage in it, because it can, you have to remember aquifers are nothing more than water sitting in a big gravel bed under the earth, so they could have a lot of oil, like hydrogen sulfide down there, they could have a lot of iron, they could have, we have some clients with methane, Bill, you went on a methane call with me. So this kind of a system allows us to try to accommodate or adjust for those kind of conditions and that's why it became a much better control valve. Also, Helen Brand provides extremely better uh, customer service than Clack Corporation. So it still is a Clack valve, but Helen Brand, you know, basically uh, sort of like the Cadillac of GM. So, uh, and we buy this through uh, Helen Brand. They manufacture it, and we put our name on it. So. Uh, that Helen Brand has talked about improving the valve themselves. Who knows what the overall goal is? But uh, they work continuously to try to improve the computer co components of that valve in order to, to make it better. So we do sell that valve as our A3000. Uh, you sell that you guys all have that on your price sheet. It's also part of our chlorinator, that valve. Uh, it's also part of our ozone systems that we sell. Right, cool. Okay? So uh, and uh, Helen Brand only sells to high-end dealers like us. They don't sell, they're not a distributor selling to a guy out of his garage. They're looking for higher-end dealers who really understand water and are going to really utilize that product and, and utilize the features that they put forth on it. Since the, as we became more involved with other companies out there, we came, uh, EcoWater came back around towards us and in our process of learning more about radium, we needed to find more company, a company that had that could meet the standards that the EPA has. And Warren Buffett bought Equal Water about six, five or six years ago. And in the process of buying it, they decided that they were going to make sure that the product met all the standards that EPA would need to have. And they started submitting their products, and they started manufacturing the products to meet those standards. So the Eco Water water softener is an all-American made product. The vessel is made in America. The resin is proprietary resin through uh, Eco Water. Uh, it has different filtering ability than any of the other units we just talked about. This unit uses a, Helen Brand uses a high grade American made resin. They, they, they uh, give us a guarantee that they will only use a high grade resin. Now, the entire unit is not NSF certified, but we know that the components are NSF certified. So the tank has a certification for not adding anything to the water. The resin is certified to remove radium, 
but the whole unit itself has not been submitted to NSF for radium removal. They have not invested that money in it, and they have not gotten approval for it. So on EPA cases, we cannot use that product, period. Do I feel comfortable with it? I feel pretty comfortable with it. I feel more comfortable with one that the EPA or NSF, the EPA has given its blessing to, and NSF has said, top to bottom, this is the very best. This unit, by the way, the way it doses salt, is it counts gallons, and it regenerates based on, it's, it's got a computer that's charting the family's water usage. So we would set this to say 10 pounds of salt, and it's sort of charting the, uh, the behavior of a home, so it knows why it's Saturday, the family comes in, kids come home from college, and we use a ton of salt, or a ton of water. So it knows that, hey, if this filter material in here is a little bit ex pretty exhausted, it's halfway exhausted, it knows the next day they're going to go through about 700 gallons of water, so it's going to automatically regenerate ahead of schedule. Now in its process, it's using 10 pounds of salt. But in that context of knowing the patterning, it can actually reduce the amount of salt that this unit uses. This one just simply counts gallons and regenerates. So what Helen Brand was able to do is auto get a little bit more computer savvy and be able to reduce the sodium usage that a homeowner has. By the way, this meter unit works better than the time clock unit and probably, I'd say, only better than the, uh, the auto troll or the fleck only because uh, it's its meter is more accurate than any of those. So that's really the only advantage that this one offers. Again, that one is computer that starts to chart the water usage and then regenerate. This unit, the Eagle Water ESD 2502 and the ECR 3502, they not only chart the family's water usage and regenerate based on its knowledge, it also regenerates and has what's called alternate salt dosing. And alternate salt dosing means Again, if the college kid came home on, and they use a ton of water on Saturday, and yet it's only exhausted, say, it's only used up, say, 10% of its filter material, and it says, you know what, let's just regenerate, now it knows to take only, say, 2 pounds of salt. And it will use 2 pounds of salt, and as it doses its salt, it actually does what's called upflow brining. So it means that it pushes the sodium down the distributor, and as it passes up through the filter material, the resin, as you can imagine, the little beads in there, the resin already is charged. So the salt passes right by there. The computer knows it only needs two pounds of salt, so as it comes up to the calcium that has done the ion exchange, it does an efficient way of exchanging the sodium with the calcium ion. Then it has a proper, it, it, as a result of just dosing with only two pounds of salt, it can then use less water in its cleaning cycle. It also has less excess salt behind. So there's virtually no chlorides left behind. So as this unit goes through its cleaning cycle and dumps water down its drain, it has virtually no chlorides. So those chlorides, as they go down the drain, if they go into a septic system, that can, and some septic companies say it ruins the digestive tract of a septic field. I don't know. There's debates on both sides of that article. That, that, uh, uh, on that, there's debates on both sides whether it does inhibit the growth or the bacterial um, um, process of the septic tank. And then there's some, like the University of Wisconsin Madison says, sodium actually helps that digestive process. I don't know which it is because I'm not that expert, but what I do know is this unit will de dose less salt if this is tied into a sewer line that goes to a septic tank. If it goes out into a sump pump that goes outside the person's house, you have to remember that a lot of customers are worried about, hey, I don't want to burn out my sump pump because all of these units here have dumped a lot of salt down the sump pump. And what that does is that sodium eats away at metals, right? So the sump pumps break a lot. In fact, the real negative on these time clocks is people would literally blow through sump pumps every two years. And they would have freakouts because their sump pumps are flooding their basement because they're broken. Why are they broken? The excess salt that's going down there. Now, the customers think, oh, it's running more often because it's putting water down the drain all the time. No, motors are designed to run. It's not the aggregate amount of water going into the sump pump. 
It's the salt that's going in there. It's eating up the motor itself. So you have to educate the customer to the reason why their sump pumps are bad. As a licensed plumbing company, we now know these features because we've taken them apart. We now see it. So what we found is, as we get to more computerized systems that's charting water usage, there's less salt going down the drain. When we go to upflow brine technology and alternate salt dosing, there's virtually no chlorides going down. And so if we're going into the sump pump, it, it doesn't burn out that pump. One other thing that you need to remember when you talk to customers about water softeners as they dump into the sump pump, is that sump pump pumps the water outside. And as it leaves the building, it goes into a drain tile. It's a four inch corrugated tile. Almost every home has it. You can actually find that outside the house and it goes 21 inches to 35 inches below the earth and it travels away from the house. So that sump pump literally is designed to take groundwater as it's pushing against the concrete wall of the basement, it flows down and it gets into uh, a gravel bed that they have behind the concrete wall and it brings that water to the sump pump pit. So as it pumps that up and pumps up this water, it takes it outside and takes it into this drain tile that takes it away from the house. So again, we're moving water away from the home so it doesn't push on the concrete foundation. It's very important to understand that. It's important for you guys to be able to tell that to customers because they need to understand that. Your homeowners are in the basement, they have no idea what the sump pump is for. It's actually designed to take that aggregate water that's pushing against the wall as it flows down into what's called a drain tile, 12 to 18, 18 inches of gravel, it's actually sitting outside that concrete wall. It allows that water to flow over to that sump pump. Now, as we're pumping that up and away from the house, that, that's only a 12 to 18, or I mean, uh, 21 inches underground. Now, if that pump, if that pipe is running along some fine trees, some beautiful oak trees or beautiful trees, if they have one of these high usage salt units that are dumping a lot of salt down that sump pump, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that, wait a second, we're dumping tons of salt into that drain tile that's going by your beautiful landscape. Is that what you really want to do? We've had clients who had went to their septic tanks or into their drain tiles and they would call us out and they're like, look at all that beautiful landscape, it's all burned out. It has to be the water softener. We've called, talked to our landscaper, we water it correctly, we're watering it with raw water, what's going on? Well, they have, we found that they have these time clock units and they're plowing through tons of salt and it was going off every other day. Why? Because they didn't want to invest into an iron filter, so they're going cheaper on their filtration system, but yet they were buying tons of money, tons of costs, or a lot of expensive plantings outside, and yet they were getting ruined by buying a cheap water softener. So the minute that customer understood that, they invested into a higher grade water softener that dumped less salt down the drain, and they invested into an iron filter system to be able to avoid that. So it's a very important aspect to understand about water softeners because when you migrate to what we consider the very best water softener, it does alternate salt dosing, it doses from the bottom up, and that's an important understanding. Because as we're direct driving it from the bottom up, their technology that we're paying for in this much more expensive system is designed to use less salt. If we dose from the salt from the top down, you are uh, you're having to penetrate the entire bed. That's why they, they don't have alternate salt dosing. Because they've got to push it down through the calcium that's been, that's been built up on the top of this bed. Sort of like a cake, guys. As the, as the calcium flows down through this, the calcium does an ion exchange on the top of the bed, and it starts getting a thicker and thicker frosting on the top of that bed. So if we dose from the bottom up, we pass that level, and we can dose with the exact amount of salt. If we're going from the top down, we just have to hit it with 10 pounds of salt, and what happens is the ion exchange happens right away, but we have to overdose it with salt because it doesn't work as efficiently as bottom up. Um, this unit has an external meter, but it doesn't have this kind of design, so you do need to understand that there is not a hard wire meter into it, but there, we have had very, very few complaints about the meter getting kicked up with it. The reason being is that the meter is on the out of this unit, and EcoWater has a proprietary technology on the resin, the filter material in here. 
So not only does that filter material meet NSF standards for radium removal, it also removes more iron than any other resin on the market that we can see or that we have the availability to buy. And because of their technology, we've seen up to six air, yes. six parts per million of iron removed with just this unit. Now you need to be careful because in our market, there's always iron bacteria. So again, you need to do a test or check, make sure you, at a very minimum, you've inspected toilets and ask the customer, you haven't cleaned these toilets, have you? Please remember, it's important, if the house is sold, a lot of times the seller of the home will literally clean the reservoirs in the back of the toilets and then you can actually see the scrub marks because they don't want a, a new homeowner or prospective homeowner to take the lid off and see the slime and the gunk that's in there. So I've literally been at a new homeowner's house taking the lid off and you can see the cleaning marks and I'm like, did you just, have you lived here long? Because it looks like you cleaned the toilet and they're like, no, but I just bought the house. Oh, well they prepped the house for sale. They killed the bacteria that was back here in this toilet. The toilet tape is your petri dish for a home. It gives us a rough idea. It's a visual indicator. You have to remember, as a visual indicator, it is not a certain way to tell if they have bacteria. The only way to know for sure, according to the 